Aloha, Pastor Danny here. Just a couple announcements for you. Saturday, September 26th, men's breakfast. We're going to do this on Zoom. So you'll get to do this from the comfort of your home. Go to KaimakiChristian.org to sign up for the men's breakfast. You're going to be encouraged by a football coach who's gone through the ups and downs of life. So join us. We're all going to be together in this. It's going to be a good time together. Give Aloha is happening all through the month of September. So there's still time. And what you can do in the Give Aloha campaign is you can take um, your offering and instead of giving it directly to Kaimaki Christian Church, you'd give it to Foodland and Foodland will give it to Kaimaki Christian Church and they will actually add money on top of that. So it's a wonderful way to stretch your giving. So all you need to do is visit any Foodland store. And when you go to check out your groceries, you can say, hey, I'd like to make a donation. And uh, you would say, I want to donate to Kaimiki Christian Church. The code is 78469. And you can donate up to $249. And once you do that, you'll get a receipt. That receipt is your tax record. So don't lose that. Hold on to it. You're not going to get mailed one. Uh, the church is not going to have it on file for you. You got to hold on to that, okay? But once you get that, Kaimiki Christian Church will receive the entirety of your donation and Foodland will add on top of that. So it's a wonderful way to stretch your giving. It's a wonderful way to stretch your stewardship of what God's given to you. Good morning, church family. Uh, good to see all of you. I know you're all logged in. We're doing online. And I'll tell you, this is the most unusual annual meeting we've ever had. <laughs> But nevertheless, you know, we'll have a good annual meeting and a celebration. So I wanted to officially open up our annual meeting, which is uh, 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 required by our bylaws. And so this meeting will come to order. We do have a quorum by the number of you who have logged in. And so the first order of business is going to be the election of elders. Uh, but before I get into that, I just wanted to thank all of you, our church family, for weathering this very unusual and challenging time. I mean, it's not easy, you know. I just love to see all of you in church, but so we have to do it, you know, online now. But anyway, I want to thank you because uh, you've stuck with the church, you've hung in there, you've been online, you've attended Ohana groups, and we really do appreciate all of you for all of that. I also want to thank our staff, uh, the pastoral and ministerial staff, as well as the administrative staff, as well as the school for all that they're doing to keep the church and the school running during this very challenging time. And they've done a marvelous job. Thank you to every one of you. And so I also want to thank uh, regarding the eldership, uh, Steve Yoshioka. He has served for two terms. And uh, he's uh, moving on along with his wife, Bev, to his own uh, different kind of ministry. And we wish him well. And thank him for the uh, six years of service he provided on the board. And so today we are electing the new, uh, re-electing two elders as well as a new elder. And uh, as you already have probably done, you've sent your ballots in. And so the results are that both uh, Danny, as well as Kevin Quinn, have been re-elected as elders, as well as uh, uh, Vihia Gu as a new elder. We think he's going to make a fine addition to the eldership with his youth, as well as his wisdom. So uh, I'm glad to announce that all three are elders uh, to continue. Uh, at this point in time, I'd like to uh, call on Un An, our treasurer, to give us our annual financial report. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share about the financial report of our church and school for the past year. The first two slides will show you the income statement of the church and school. The first slide shows the, that the church came in slightly in the surplus this year of just over 100000 And the second slide will show you that the school came in with a small shortfall of a negative uh, figure of just over 42000 The two uh, church and school put together, though, we were fortunate to be able to still be in a net positive position at the end of the year. The following slide shows our balance sheet for the church and school, and you should see that we still have a very strong net worth position of slightly over $15 million. The next slide is a graph of the annual giving for our church for the past 14 years. 
If you look at the whole, whole graph, you'll see that the trend is still positive, but the last couple of years, it has fallen slightly. In the year 1819, we took a small dip, but then actually in the year 1920, this past fiscal year, for the first half of the year, we were actually recovering. But then, as you all know, COVID-19 came, and there were some challenges, so we ended the year on slightly a downtrend. Following slide shows the update on our building loans. We, have, we had two building loans. They were both slightly over a million dollars, but fortunately this year we were able to pay one of them off, the phase 2A, as it came due. If you see the following slide, you'll see the history of our debt repayment. By slowly paying down our loan on a monthly basis, periodically using some of our cash reserves, and applying our net year-end surplus, we were able to pay off our Phase 2A loan when it came due on June 2020. We still have a balance on our Arnold Hall loan, but the goal and hope is to be able to pay it off when it matures in approximately two years. I'd like to end by reading the scripture, Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. Jesus watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow who has put more into the treasury than all the others, she out of her poverty put in everything. Due to COVID-19, this past year has been financially challenging for our church and school. But through the PPP loan and unexpected windfall donations, we were able to come out okay. But I believe the difference maker for our church and school was the giving nature of our congregation as a whole. Like the widow in the verses I just read from Scripture, many of you struggled financially and had little, but gave much this past year. You gave faithfully and sacrificially. You have honored God, blessed our church and school, and humbled me. Thank you. Good morning, church family. We thank you so much for being with us online today. Um, before we begin in worship, let's just invite God to be here, to be present, to do what he wants to do. We'll say, Jesus, build your kingdom here. All right, let's sing together.
As we worship you all together here today in this moment, as we call out your name, speak out your name, sing your praises, you are here in our midst wherever we are. And so God, we take a moment to humble ourselves in this holy space. We make room for you, God, right now to do whatever you want to do. Our hearts are open, our minds are open, our eyes, our ears. Feel free to speak, Lord, feel free to move. In your name we pray, amen. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. tradition. 
Aloha Church, welcome to Vision Weekend. Even in the midst of uncertainty, even in the midst of this pandemic, we still have vision. God still has given us vision and we are still going places. It is an exciting time for the church because we are reaching a lot of people for Jesus, more people than prior to the pandemic. You could say amen to that in the chat channel, just write amen. In fact, vision is so important. The scriptures talk a lot about vision. In, in fact, the Proverbs write about uh, vision. Here's what we read in Proverbs 29, 18. In the King James Version, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. In, in the NIV, it says, where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instructions. As we look to the future in this Vision Sunday, it is important and appropriate to look back to see what God has done in the life of our church in the past 20 years, to see what God has done through the men and women and to bring us to where we are now. And in fact, over 20 years ago, Pastor Ron had a vision that we would own the entire city block here. And what's fascinating about this time was there were a lot of homes on this block, but these homes hadn't been sold for 30 years. They just stayed in the same owner, the same families, and so nothing happened. But what is fascinating 
is that God gave Pastor Ron this vision. And when God gives us a vision, he starts opening up roadways. He starts opening up ways to make this vision happen. So Pastor Ron gets this vision, and then what happens is slowly but surely, these properties on our block start to become available to us. And in fact, let's hear from two people. One is uh, Cell, who was our realtor, uh, who is our realtor, and helped us with the acquisitions of all these properties. And, uh, and then we'll also hear from Gene about their experience 20 plus years ago. Uh, the process of purchasing the properties, that's the story in itself. And that's, you know, that's, that's definitely another. the Lord's hand at work because absolutely, um, there would have been no way we could have purchased everything that had come on the market other than the times each property came on the market, basically. Exactly. Uh, so if, every, if multiples came on at one time, we would have had the wherewithal to exactly. proceed. And we were able to acquire property by property over the years in a neighborhood where properties just hadn't sold historically in 20, 30 years. Nothing had changed hands prior to that. So they would approach, decades. they would approach what, Jerry or Mark? Each one was in? different. Uh, some, yeah. some, uh, we had to, some we approached them and some they approached us and some, some, you know, weren't overly happy about the expansion of the church and said, well, maybe it's a good time for us to look for something else. And we helped mm -hmm. them do that, relocate to other places. So each one was, each, each situation was different. Okay. So then first was the Eben Chan house i thought that was a miracle because that was one of i think one of i wouldn't say a, an opponent but you know he didn't really like what was happening so i said okay well that's that's you know okay then we did the renovation and then the lot um the, the parking lot i thought okay it's okay then the bow house i went wow that is amazing because that house was just uh, brothers and sisters living in that house. But what happened to them is they were all having health issues. And so they couldn't stay in that house. And one of them happened to be my mom's friend, you know? And I went, what? So that happened and I went, uh oh, okay. And then the Ventula house. And then the Asato house. <laughs> I think from the Bao house on, I became a believer. I just said, this is God. This is absolutely God. And like I said before, watching all of these houses just come to us, you know, I mean, and we're having the money to pay for it at that time. The timing, how can that be a coincidence? That's God. So whenever we talk about vision, we have to always remember our mission. The mission doesn't change. Vision can change depending on circumstances, depending on what's happening, but mission doesn't change. And here's the mission of Kaimiki Christian Church. Our mission of Kaimiki Christian Church is to glorify God by making disciples who love God passionately and their neighbor as themselves. So this idea of this mission to love our neighbors as ourselves, to make disciples, to, to, to have people know Jesus, that has been the propeller for the vision, the propeller for everything that we do. And over 20 years ago, so this actually this year is the 20th anniversary of the expansion of our worship center. Prior to the current worship center that I'm in currently right now, our worship center, prior to 20 years ago, it was just half a building with the roof like this, and it was just half the size. So if you came, you know, in the last 19 years, five years, in the last one year, in the last three months, um, you've only seen the expanded worship center. But this is the year we celebrate the 20th anniversary of the expansion of the worship center. So in order, though, to expand the worship center, because Ron had this vision that God wanted us to have this block. Now, the, now it wasn't just to have this entire block, just to have property. But these buildings were to house the vision so that people could go out, the church could go out and be the church, to be the hands and feet of Jesus, that they'd be equipped, encouraged, nourished, and then they would go out to be the hands and feet of Christ, making an impact for the kingdom. But 
one of the big parts that we needed was to expand our current worship center because we were growing out of it. So one Sunday, Pastor Ron was preaching and our architect, Norman Hong, who is our current uh, chairman of the elders, drew a little sketch. And this sketch became the famous sketch that became our second building, or the, the second part of our building, the expansion of our worship center. So basically, we have uh, the, the worship center like this. Norman was able to bring it so it looked like it fit perfectly, which is really difficult with, uh, when you're talking about expansion. So we had the architect. Well, then we needed builders. Norman got the builders and Dave and Ryan Asato. But then we needed the owner's representative, a project manager, and that person was Gene Smith. Gene Smith was a retired army officer, and he was the chairman of the board of elders at the time. And I've heard a lot of stories about Gene. I've had the privilege of meeting him in person once, talking to him on the phone and corresponding with him a handful of times. But but Gene, in all the stories I've heard, one of the ones I'd like to share with others now is that Gene, when he was on the work site, he was the owner's representative. He was the project manager. He, he played a lot of roles while the construction was going for our current worship uh, facility as it was being expanded. He would pray for the builders. He would anoint the builders with oil. He would care for the uh, workers. And in fact, there is one story where uh, it was midway in the project and there was some conflict, there were some issues going on. And so Gene got everyone together. He got the supervisor, assistant supervisor, the contractor, the, the architect. He got everyone together. He anointed them with oil and he prayed with them. And from what I've been told that after that moment, things were smooth and things went well. And Gene Smith at that time was 80 years old. And he was still <laughs> climbing on the roof, checking things, connecting with the workers, knew their names at 80 years old. He had a heart to serve and a heart to care. In fact, let's hear some of these stories of what it was like 20 years ago from the builders, from Dave and Ryan. And let's hear about what they say about Gene as well as Ron. Gene. One of the things that I really remember during a construction project was, like Ryan said, we would have weekly meetings and Gene would be sitting in on all the weekly meetings. He wanted to know what was going on. He wanted to be aware of what was happening. And when we had problems, he was, like Ryan said, he was the calming factor. He was, he was a rock. He was the person that was the sage. The sage is the wise man. The wise man, he doesn't, he didn't jump, scream, or kick anybody. He didn't swear. He was just there to observe and give one or two comments that made the whole difference in the whole meeting. And it was so amazing. He was the sage. For uh, the construction portion, I got to know Pastor Ron really well. And uh, it's like Ryan said, he was, um, of the people walking, he was the God man. He had the Holy Spirit with him. So he uh, watched the construction, of course, wanted to know what was going on. And yet he brought the Holy Spirit with him. So bringing the Holy Spirit would have meant the faith factor came in. So we knew that we knew that even though the worship center was going to be demolished and nobody was going to have church in the, demol in the center, it was going to be a temporary place. And so I told Pastor Ron, hey, you know that, man, you came out to the sanctuary, you got your fellowship going to drop. He goes, well, we're believing in faith that it will. And sure enough, the fellowship grew. I said, what? How can that be? But he was the he was the guy that kept the faith going. He was the faith man. So even again, 
And I played golf with him. You know, he would get bad shots. But he would always come back with, I'll get him on the next one. So he was an optimist. He was always smiling. And I know he had some stress. I know, meeting a congregation, you, know, you get good and bad things. But he was the God man. He was so much in tune with the Holy Spirit. He was a, a great example for me. So I've always wondered when I looked at the building before the expansion, why the roof was like this. Have you ever, I mean, have, have you seen those old pictures and you're like, why is the roof like this? I don't get it. I didn't get it until just recently when Mark Gallagher explained this to me. The original architect uh, drew up designs in the late 1960s in which the, uh, the roof of that structure uh, was meant to represent the Ko'olau Mountains. So when you stood uh, by the library and looked, yes, on Cocoa Head Avenue, it kind of sloped down, like on the leeward side. And then on the right side was the vertical, like uh, windward side of the Ko'olau's. But 20 years later, God revealed through Norman Hong that he had a further master plan for us. That plan, uh, as we know, sometimes when you build an addition, it looks like a tack on. There's always that danger. But in the, in the master's plan, it completed the building as if it were designed this way originally. And at the center of it was the raised cross. I'll never forget when we gathered in August 2020 for the dedication service. Hundreds of us uh, jammed in there. And as we stood shoulder to shoulder singing, we are standing on holy ground. A sensation came over me that I'd never experienced before or since. And I remember thinking, this is a taste of what heaven is going to be like. Wow. Well, another highlight for me was that um, that Christmas, for the first time in the 30-some year experience of the church, we could hold our Christmas program inside instead of outside of the parking lot. Uh, and that's continued to be a blessing through the years. Uh, this took place during my first year as a new principal of KCS. And it was uh, something of a baptism of fire for me. Some of the challenges were uh, starting first thing in the school day, uh, no access to the Harding Avenue parking lot. So we had to set up an arrangement where parents drove down Mahina Avenue, and then we would walk out into the street to their car, open the doors, get the kids, escorting the younger kids to and from Gallagher Hall. Uh, before and after school every day. There was a lot of praying for no rain that year. <laughs> um, another memory was the plywood barricades and the dust, dust screens. Uh, they were there, of course, to help deaden the noise and to keep dust out of the classrooms. But it left us with a, a dark, cavern-like environment. So, uh, the noise was really something. Uh, first of all, when that uh, wrecking ball with, on the long boom would swing and crash into the side of the uh, wall that we had to tear down to expand. And then that was followed by, uh, for quite a while it seemed, uh, jackhammering through blue rock, that solid rock, for the shaft of the elevator. about. 25 feet from my desk, um, very memorable. <laughs> uh, the lack of access to the fellowship hall and worship center presented some challenges. Uh, we had to make accommodations. Uh, a real blessing out of that was Pastor Kakaoka who opened up his facilities on Wailai Avenue to allow us to have a nice place for our Friday chapels. Uh, real quickly, uh, 
memorable back on the noise that we had to buy industrial strength earmuffs for everybody. Applications for the following school year were down. What would happen is parents would come in the fall and early spring to tour the campus and they were dubious. I could just see it on their faces when I told them, you got to look beyond this. This is all going to be done before next school year. As an elder of KCC, it was, it was hard to see some of our longtime uh, church members leave. Uh, they, they were pretty honest about it. Some thought that it was not a good use of funds. Others didn't want to see us grow, frankly. They, were, they had grown comfortable over the 30 years we'd been in that smaller worship center, and, and they were happy that way. As I reflect back now on the last 20 years since, since that construction of our expansion of our worship center, it's obvious to me that that was like a major a stepping, first stepping stone uh, for the plan, master plan for the block that God has continually revealed. It's been exciting, and I'm just exciting about what we can expect to come. Uh, keeping in mind that the building is not the vision, it's meant to house the vision. Praise God. One of the things I've learned about our church is I've studied our history, and as I get to share about our history, and I get to uh, hear stories from some of the legends, and, and I refer to the legends as, as, as the men and women who've been here a long time, who are committed. Uh, they might think I call them legends because they're old, but that's not true. I call them legends because they're like pillars. And but one of the things I've learned from from these great men and women uh, is is that as we as we look at the history of our church, our church has always been for the keiki and the youth. You could write amen in the comments center, write amen. We love our keiki. We love our youth. We love our young adults. But even the building um, and, and, and everything we're doing on the block was was for the next generation. So we care for the youth. And in fact, when 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 I got hired here almost two years now, when I got hired here, the first person we hired was our youth and young adults pastor and Cameron Henderson. So we have value, Keiki. We value you. Then we're going to continue to value the next generation and build them up and train them and power them to reach uh, their generation for Jesus and then the next generation for Jesus. And it's exciting times are ahead of us. And so our church has always been for Keiki and youth. Here's some stories to explain that. It was just a blessing to be a small part in the construction. And, you know, not only that, but uh, my, my daughter Kylie was mm -hmm. able to graduate the first graduating class at Kaimaki Christian School. She graduated from there, and that was awesome. And right now, my daughter Racine is in the sixth grade. And so... Like Dad said, you know, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, And looking back, I never would have thought all this would have been possible. But I guess it's God's upper story. Wow. He was able to orchestrate this. And in my simple little mind, I would have never thought that this would have been the plan. And it's amazing to see that it's not only the church. It becomes the school has expanded. And soon, soon uh, Kaimuki Christian will have the whole block, which is such a blessing, you know, put in a gym and, you know, Pastor Ron's vision and Norman's vision, everybody's vision is coming and God's going, I knew that already. You know, that's all. <laughs> I, um, I had a chance to grow up at the church and I remember the old building. It was such a nice, loving, welcoming place. And um, I grew a lot there. Um, so it was awesome. And now that 20 years later, I, I have four children and I'm so grateful that the building is bigger. I feel like it's more welcoming. I feel like it's more comfortable. I know that my children are going to be able to grow there spiritually as, as well as physically and emotionally and all that stuff. So it's just an inviting place. And this new building uh, is very special. And I'm super uh, proud to, to see it go from the smaller building that it was to the, the bigger building that it is. And I feel like more people can, can fit. We can invite more people, our, our, our children, my children, and maybe their children, 
I will get to see this thing grow. In 20 years, it's gone from something great to something amazing. And in the next 20 years, it's going to be even better. So I can't wait to see that. But happy birthday, building 20 years. Choo! It's been a home for four generations of our family. You know, we had uh, Jerry's mom, Fumi, who was uh, a member of the church. And then Jerry and I, of course. And then our daughter, Dana, and her husband, Bobby, and now our two grandsons. Awesome to see um, what vision God uh, gave through Ron and the elders 20 years ago uh, to have a facility that we can all benefit from. And it's been an awesome journey for our family. And we thank God that, you know, he has been with us every step of the way. I think it's always been really um, comforting for me to know, to have grown up in the church. You know, my I grew up in, well, I spent my high school years in the church. Um, my mom's mom, my grandma, Fumi, eventually became a member of the church. Um, and yeah, there are so many aunties and uncles, Sanai and Craig, um, who are our small group leaders. I knew them from when they were attended my parents' small group. Um, and I think that's, that's true of so many people in the church who I have relationships with because they knew me from when I was younger. Um, and it, it just, it means so much to me now that my sons are able to be there and build those kinds of relationships too. And even now when we're not actually in church, um, you know, them being able to say good morning to Pastor Marie and Pastor Nofo and Uncle Richie, who, by the way, is past Uncle Richie and Auntie Sina. I mean, those two love on my boys so much and they're such a blessing to us. And all the aunties and uncles who, who really care about um, our family and our kids. During the construction, our church committed to giving 5% of everything that was brought in to Kenya to help missionaries and to help children in Kenya. So all the money that was coming in, we were giving 5% out. In fact, can I say something? Our church is a generous church. And I've said that so many times, but it's true. In the last 10 years, we've given over $2 million to organizations to help the needy, to help orphans, to help those who have been displaced, to, to, to help churches grow, to help people know Jesus. So over $2 million to help people right here in our own backyard. Um, and the list goes on and on. But $2 million in the last 10 years, because our church has always been a generous church. And our philosophy is, is that God has blessed us, so we want to bless others. We saw how the mission and vision was being acted upon, and it was not just something, words that were on the, on the wall. And that's what really I was really impressed with, um, that we could see, you know, for example, we could see that the church was really interested in uh, missions work. Uh, and not, not only just the Pacific Rim, which a lot of churches do in Hawaii, they, they do missions work in, in the Pacific Rim. But um, Pastor Ron, <laughs> I thought at the beginning, but was, was taking us to missions in Africa, in, in um, the Middle East, and uh, even in Southeast Asia. And so that, that really stretched us. And we saw, that, uh, we saw that this little church had a global view of Christian missions, you know, and uh, so that that was really uh, something that that was really good for me to to see. So part of this master plan that Pastor uh, that God gave Pastor Ron uh, was to build this multi-level 
parking structure and on top have a gymnasium. And part of the master plan is to add another wing to the school. And those things are still going to happen. And I'm so excited about what's going to happen. So, so we're going to build on what was originally called the 2020 vision. And this is, this is the vision I believe God wants us to continue to do. God wants us to continue to move further. And, uh, and, and so that's what we're going to do. He continues to have exciting adventures ahead for us. He continues, wants us to grow and connect with all generations and love and grace and spirituality, uh, and spiritually connecting with our Lord and Savior. He wants us to grow intellectually. He wants us to offer places to continue reaching people for Jesus in Hawaii and into the ends of the earth. And so this new vision Yes, it's a continuation of the vision that God gave Pastor Ron 20 plus years ago, but it's a vision that God still wants to happen. And all of us get to play a role in that. Isn't that exciting? You get to play a role in that. We will build this parking structure with the gymnasium on top. We will build this classroom, this extra wing of classrooms, because we're going to continue to grow spiritually and numerically. And, and, and the vision now, we can never restate the, 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 the vision. And here's our current vision, that Kaimi, Kaimi Key Christian Church will be a vibrant community where people connect, grow, and are empowered to follow Jesus. Write that down. Connect, grow, and power. Connect, grow, and power. Connect, grow, and power to follow Jesus. And that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to connect with him, the creator. God wants us to connect with the creator and he wants us to connect with one another and he wants us to connect with those who don't know the Lord. Not only that, but, but he wants us to, to grow, grow in our faith, grow in our knowledge, grow in our relationship with him. And then he wants us to be empowered, to know the stuff, uh, to feel confident in our calling, to feel confident in, in the calling that he has placed on our lives. And we want to do that. We want to equip you and we want uh, your small group leaders to equip you and the other leaders to equip you. We want this church to be a place that houses the, the, the vision so that we all could go out and reach the world for Christ. Amen. And this will always be a church that raises the cross. Well, when... The construction was happening, or before the construction happened, you had to get all these approvals from the city uh, and all these variances and, and all of that because we wanted to build higher than what was uh, you know, around Kaimi kind of Key area. So you had to get approval. So there was one famous meeting at the neighborhood board and Norman, the architect, was explaining the, the plans. Here's why it would benefit the community. Here's what it's going to look like et cetera, et cetera. But the vibe of that neighborhood board meeting was that they were going to vote down the expansion of the worship center. But one person tried to, you know, find a middle ground, you know, trying to figure out, okay, all right, maybe not that high, maybe this high. And, and one person said, well, what if he just lowered the cross? Pastor Ron stood up. He says, our community needs the cross. In fact, our community is hurting. There is pain. Our community needs the cross. That's what we need. Our community needs Jesus. In fact, we're not going to lower the cross, but we're going to raise the cross. And church, 20 years from now, 100 years from now, Kami Key Christian Church will always be known as a church that raises the cross. Hello, Kaimaki Christian Church. I'm Anna Dara Arnold, and I'm so glad to be with you guys together this way to celebrate the 20 year anniversary of your beautiful Holy Spirit filled worship center. Uh, so many memories there, and I'm thankful to have so many with you and so many with my father in law, Pastor Ron Arnold. This is his guitar, and so uh, looking forward to just joining together and singing this beautiful song that is near and dear to so many of our hearts and has been through the years, through it all, Raise the Cross. Lord, you've given all. Jesus, we've heard you call. You lived and died. You sacrificed 
rest your life. Lord, we celebrate. Jesus, we dedicate. We live our lives to hold your banner high. Hold it high. Raise the cross. Raise the cross. Lift the light of Jesus. Let it shine. Raise the cross. Raise the cross. Lord, in our lives, raise the cross. Lord, through all our days, Jesus will sing your praise. We'll show you. desire to spread abroad your fame, to live for you and gladly raise your cross, raise your cross, mm, raise the cross, raise the cross, lift the light of Jesus God bless you guys. Uh, my name is Rocky Arnold, and I am Pastor Ron Arnold's son. Um, I'm an architect, and I attended the Uni University of Hawaii from 1996 to 2000. During that time, I had the privilege of interning with Group 70 International, Hawaii's best architecture firm, and I got to work personally with Norman Hong, who's, of course, uh, been at Kamehameha Christian for years. And while at that time, I was able to actually contribute to the worship center design, which um, We'll get to, again, see soon. Obviously, none of you are there right now, but hopefully we will be back soon. So um, I read through my dad's notes, and he said that I came to him once and said, hey, we really should do something just outside the doors to the worship center. And he said, all right, go for it. So that led me to then come up with um, what I'm going to explain to you here. So as you can see on the screen, um, and you may remember walking across it once, we had, um, there's kind of this star looking there. And essentially, um, you know, my, my dad was always working through the church's mission, the church's vision. And at that point in time, he came up with this mission and this vision for the church that would have these five M's, and that's what would define us. And those M's were magnification, maturity, membership, ministry, and mission. And so we, we, we represented those with this design. So at the center of the design is the, is the blue square. Um, and it's kind of a gradient, and that blue square represents God's greatness and his creation. The various shades of blue are done to um, envision the, the creation of the universe and the seas and the oceans. 
Next, once you, once you believe in your Lord as your Savior, you start to mature as a Christian. And so you can see there's these arrows in the star that kind of emanate from the center. And the smaller blocks really represent those different pieces that, that are required to become a mature Christian. Uh, a life of prayer, reading his word, and studying God's word, and of course, giving. Next, after you start to become a believer, start walking in your faith, you then start to grow in community. And that's what the circle with the small pebbles represents. The pebbles are different shapes and different sizes, but they're all contained in, you know, in, in this circle, and they work together and with one another. So that represents all of us. And then as a group, we're then able to reach out and expand ourselves and reach out into the church and in the community using the gifts that God has given us to minister to others. That's what the larger blocks just outside of the circle represent. Using your talents, whether it's, you know, teaching, music, um, greeting, uh, painting in the, in the community, all those things that Kamaki Christian has done so well for so many years. And of course, the star is a north arrow and it points to true north. And the true north uh, for Kamaki Christian is to reach the lost people is to reach lost people with the good news of Jesus. And so we can look to this to continually remind us of that mission. That, that, that is our true purpose. So I uh, hope you're all well. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share this with you. And may God bless you all. So the Capital Stewardship Program, uh, I remember when I first heard about it, it was uh, something I've never heard of before, and I didn't know that churches raise money that way. But um, I was skeptical at first, and then Pastor Ron, he did a, a really great job of explaining what it was and, and what the Bible said about money. And uh, I think the theme was not equal gifts, but equal sacrifice. And that made a lot of sense. You know, not everybody can, of course, give the same amount, but we can all sacrifice the same amount and, um, back then when it began, I think I was a valet at Kobe Steakhouse and I worked three nights a week and I was paying for community college and, and paying my rent. So I didn't have a lot of money, but I remember um, when we were trying to do our pledge amount, really pray about it, see what God is telling you. And God was giving me a number that was more than I could come up with, with, with my job. And uh, I just remember, God, is this really something you want me to do? Because I, I can't afford this. And uh, I really felt strongly that he was telling me to do that. And so I did. I pledged a certain amount that was above what I could afford. And I wish I could tell you specifically how that came to be. But over that um, the next coming years, not only was I able to pay that amount, but I remember I was able to like take vacations with my friends and do stuff and buy things and I wasn't really thinking about it as I went through it, just, you know, every other week or every month I would, I would give to the church and, and I would still do these things, not really paying attention because when you're that young, you don't really pay attention to your finances that much. But when it's all said and done, I look back and I was like, wow, I can't believe that just happened. Like God gave me this number. I couldn't afford it. I did it anyways. Praise the Lord. You know, it's a miracle. I don't, I really don't know how to account for that and still have a whole bunch of fun too. And I remember Pastor Ron used to preach quite a bit about, the Lord testing you uh, in your money and, and not so much anything else. And um, man, he proved himself faithful, that's for sure. Uh, and so that was a testimony to me at that time. And from then on out, I, you know, I don't, I don't even hesitate if God's telling me a certain thing, then I'm just going to listen because he's proved himself faithful before. And so, you know, why not keep listening? And especially since that's what the Bible tells us to do. And so, uh, that's my story for the Capital Stewardship Program, and uh, it was life-changing for me.
Church, before I give us the benediction, let me highlight two thoughts here. The first one is next week, we are starting a brand new series in the book of Revelation. If you've ever had questions about end times, if you've ever had questions about what is Revelation all about, we're going to get into a lot of these topics. And in fact, throughout the week, we're also even going to offer uh, other resources, interviews that I do with a uh, pastoral theologian, Dr. Joe Grana. We're going to offer other resources and books and things like that to help encourage you to know more about Revelation. And I'm going to be doing a book club with whoever wants to join this book club. And if you want to do this book club, email info at kaimakeechristian.org, info at kaimakeechristian.org and say, I'm interested in the book club and we will be getting back to you. The second item is starting tomorrow, Monday at 12 noon is, uh, is the start of our 48 hour prayer vigil. We want to pray for our church. We want to pray for vision. We want to pray for where we're going. We want to pray for God's continued blessing. And we also want to pray for our city, for our state, for our nation, for the world. If you want to pray, sign up right now at KaimakiChristian.org slash prayer. Sign up right now. Well, after the benediction, sign up. But KaimakiChristian.org slash prayer, and you can sign up for 15-minute time slots. You can sign up for one of those time slots, 10 of those time slots, However long you want to pray, but 48 hours, we want to be praying every single second of the day for the vision of our church, for where we're going, as well as our city, our state, and our nation, and the world. Amen? Amen. Well, let me offer us this benediction. Lord, may your vision be within our hearts, and may you empower us to impact the world, to impact our friends, to impact our sphere of influence for the kingdom of heaven. Lord, may your will be done. Amen.